Have you tried Flight Simulator 2020 and have been impressed on how well it maps to the real world? Or have you joined other users in the simulator on a journey and encountered other live aircrafts, for example? Or what about those changing weather conditions? Well, this is all powered by the cloud. So join me and Cam as we embark on a journey of discovery and a quick lap around the skies. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Cloud with Chris. You're with me, Chris Reddington, and we'll be talking about all things cloud. Now, as we teased in the intro there, we are doing uh, something slightly different today, not just talking about technology, but we're going to be even getting a little bit hands on as well. And dare I say, I'm going to be the one getting hands on and I'll be uh, joined quite literally by my uh, co-pilot and uh, partner in crime here, uh, Cam Adams. Hey, Cam. G'day, mate. How are you? Yeah, um, I, I'm generally good when I do these, but uh, this is a little bit different today. <laughs> a bit nervous, mate. To quote yeah. Maverick from Top Gun, I wasn't expecting an invite back. <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like we're getting a theme with all of these uh, these uh, phrases and uh, quotes oh, we're going to be using today. But no, oh, it's yeah. going to be a bit, a bit of fun. Exactly, exactly. So I feel we should um, we should set a bit of scene here as well. Why we're doing this one and uh, a bit of background, really. So we were just talking before we went live here that it's been about four years since I've been on this team, and probably that means about three and a half since we first met, I guess, and. Yep. Um, you know, I came over to Australia and we met and we kind of onboarded you onto the team. And uh, one of the things that we did is uh, you have a side hobby, right? You uh, you took us somewhere, if you want to yep. expand on took that. You, we uh, took you flying around uh, South Stradbroke Island. Mm. Absolutely. And uh, we're going to reenact some of that today in a, in a new simulator that recently came out, right? So Flight Sim 2020 has been very hyped and uh you know i've got it as well i've got my rig set up that i'll show in a minute but uh yeah we're gonna do yep. a similar flight to uh well yeah a similar flight at least to what we did before same general area so we're going to take off from Archerfield, mm -hmm. uh which is the the aerodrome to the south of uh to the south of brisbane and to the south of the microsoft office in brisbane which is where we departed from uh, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do to you, uh, but <laughs> it's probably going to be the longest kind of nine to 15 minutes of your life. Um, uh, and we're going to go for a fly. Uh, and we're going to have a talk about the more connected elements of mm. uh, flight sim as we do it, uh, because it is, um, it is a platform that is, it benefits from the cloud yeah. uh, quite literally, uh, being connected all the time. We're going to kind of, um, uh, we're going to do some architecture Nice. Some, some cloud <laughs> architecture on the fly, Chris. So as you're trying to uh, maintain straight and level and not oh, uh, virtually kill us, I'm going to be pumping you with a heap of questions as we as we look at a few things and talk about how it may or may not work under the hoods. All at 8 a.m. in the morning. Love it. <laughs> My know, brain yeah. is totally geared for this right now. <laughs> Uh, happy um, Monday, mate. It could be oh, worse. I know, I know, and I and I'm uh, on leave as well. My brain is already shut down from work mode. It's uh, it's all good. Right. Um, I'm yeah. just going to switch screen here a moment and just show everyone the setup that I've got here as well. So, um, yeah. so if I just zoom out a bit here, so you can see, um, I've got my proper rig set up. I've got one of the Satec uh, flight rigs here with the yoke and everything, and I've obviously got my um, Blue Yeti and everything over here and if I just uh, show you over here you can of course see Cam and uh, the OBS software all recording as well um, so just in case anyone is interested oops on the rig that I've got going on there so yep. that brings us back nicely into uh, what we're actually doing so I'm just going to bring the desktop audio in as well just so people can hear the background when they're flying and everything oh and we're mate. suiting up Let, already that's it, yeah <laughs> gotta do these things properly right awesome awesome i mean i didn't bring mine so uh i've already failed the first step there it's all right mate it's all right there we go it's not a real one this is uh this is a joke one but yeah, yeah it looks good though it's good for the uh <laughs> good for the uh good for the show that's right, and wait up. There's more props, and you may recognise these. I think this is either the set you wore or the yeah. set that I wore during the real flight. I do recognise those. 
There we go. So nice. we're, we'll at least look a bit authentic, mate. Um, <laughs> You're just going to fly us out over to me now, aren't you, from Australia? This will be a long session if we have to do that. <laughs> 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 so, um, we, you know, we were talking about what plane we were going to fly. I think we were going to go for a Cessna 172, right? As all yep. good? Yep. Which is exactly the plane that you and I flew uh, when you were last gen in Australia. Nice. Okay. I, I, I'll admit, I did do some uh, some test flights a little bit earlier, and you said this will be the longest 9 to 15 minutes of my life. Uh, yep. Put it this way, it lasted a few minutes because I kept trying to, uh, you know, increase my altitude too quickly, and then we're stalling. So yep. uh, we'll... Yep. Uh, We'll have some fun. I know the weather's been a bit fun there today, and we'll talk about that a bit later. Oh, yeah, we? we'll see how we go with that. Exactly. Um, it's all good. So I've got the manual right here, <laughs> so I, I can talk you through how to fly, a Cessna at least. Awesome. So um, uh, we're yeah. going to be setting off from Archerfield, we were saying. That's it, YBAF. Uh, and if I have a quick look at the, uh, at the weather, mate, uh, you will want to be on... Mm -hmm. Just give me a second. We'll have a look at the winds. Uh, so the winds are coming from... The winds are coming from the south. Due south, mate. So we'll be taking off on uh, runway 10 left. Okay, doke. Yep. We'll give you one of the big runways. Uh, you'll probably need it. <laughs> probably will. Uh, and we won't be coming back to Archerfield. We'll go somewhere okay. else. Do you want me to just set that well, as the arrival so as well, or uh, just freestyle it? No, uh, just freestyle how did it. I know we'll that right. was going to be the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling you where we're going. Well, a bit of fun. So interesting enough, mate. So you're you're spooling this up at the mm. moment, um, and that load time is is awesome. Clearly, a monster rig under this thing. Um, tell me about your experience installing flight sim. Was there anything that stood out to you? straight away um it was a big install it was a it's a big yeah, boy it was a big install um yeah and i know originally because uh, i know a few others on the team are enthusiasts around this as well and i know there was a few issues when we were installing it about things hanging etc and i guess that's general launch day you know setups right but uh yeah it was a big yeah. big download that initial one yeah so about Alpha 100 gig um or if you buy the dvds because it was actually available in some regions on physical media wow. it was a 150 gig setup um so let's have a quick chat about that since we're doing some cloud architecture mm. on the fly um how would you be pushing out 150 gig to uh users on launch day <laughs> what kind of stuff do you think you'd, you'd be serving it up oh, with mate? of course we want to put as many servers underneath it as we want so we can uh, spin up our spend as much as possible no i'm joking um that's <laughs> true what, what, what breaks on breaks on i haven't no, cleared no, you no, out of the runway uh, that's just a uh that's not the real oh. thing don't you worry right. uh, i'll put ready to fly though just to put you. you at ease there you go breaks are on uh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. that's the so preloading that's, video yeah, you've lined up um okay. So, yeah, I would probably have something, I'd say, backed by storage and then a CDN just because you're going to have a global user base for something like this. And if it's all like static assets, static files, of course, then with CDN, you're going to be caching that. So you're not hitting the origin and uh, you're distributing that globally. That would probably be my my first gut instinct. Yep, I think it's a uh, pretty fair assumption of what may have happened under the hoods. Um, and the other obvious benefit of a CDN for us is it pushes the content close to the exactly. user. Um, so for us in Australia, we are not close to anything, mm. globally speaking. Um, so having CDNs available for us down here uh, or for the Kiwis next door or for anyone in APAC or anywhere around the world, uh, it means we get that 150 gig as close to us as possible. Um, which is good for a latency and a bandwidth. All right. So, mate, do, does that runway look familiar to you? This runway looks uh, very familiar to me. I'm just having a little uh, little look around here. Yeah. Yeah. Was this the one we landed on? It looks, I think it looks like the one we landed. It yeah, is, yeah. yeah. One zero left, I'm pretty sure that's where we landed. Yeah. Uh, and I'm pretty sure we took off on one zero left oh, as okay. well. Uh, Currently uh, not in operation, ah. so there's four runways at Archerfield. There's two grass ones, which are off to your left, 
Uh, and then there's the, um, the 1028 complex. There's a left one and a right one. Uh, you're currently on what is the main runway. It's uh, dug up in places as they're installing uh, some new lighting mm. uh, for us at Archerfield. Gotcha. Um, so the place is frankly a mess at the moment. Um, cool, all right. How are you feeling? Yeah, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> we'll see if we got to yep. take off first. So, <laughs> yep, so um, you may or may not uh, show them the photo of us when we're actually flying. Uh, but just remember, just like then, um, those controls are made of dog poop. So you do not want to squeeze them hard. Just be very gentle mm -hmm. on them. Kind of just pinch them and move them around. Fly with your fingertips. Yep. So, you want, want me cool. to go? Ready, ready when you are, mate. Go nuts. One zero left, clear for takeoff. This is going to be... Uh... <laughs> so do you have rudder pedals? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, all right, looks like it's doing auto rudder anyway. So it's going to it's gonna want to pull you to the left um, for both strip, uh, the slipstream and, and torque. Uh, so you got to keep right. Yep. And gently pull back and just go to about five degrees on your HUD. Yeah, that's it, that's it, seven and a half, that'll do. And just hold a straight runway heading till you get to 500 feet, mate. Just keep it lit. Uh, so pitch down a little bit, pitch down, pitch down a little bit, yep. So look at that first screen in front yep. of you. See there's the marker for 10 and then the marker for five. Uh, where am I looking? So in front of oh, you there's yeah, like yeah, a I Nintendo. Yep, yep, yep. So there's a little, the little, yellow yeah, triangle it. which shows you where you're heading you want to keep that to about seven and a half okay. degrees there we go. cool all right so you're coming up to 500 feet so now is when we would have done our checks but uh <laughs> there's no one else you have to worry about hitting <laughs> so uh we're just going to get you to turn right uh turn okay. left heading zero one one heading zero one one all right. okay left yep. or right oh sorry zero zero one so you're basically going due north due north okay which yeah. is the that end on your compass um I know English is your, your, your strong suit. Yep. So just maintain your your nose, your position, so your attitude to the horizon. See it's dropped below cool. five. Yep. That's all right. That'll do. And keep the climb going to, uh, let's go to 2,000 feet, man. Yep. So that's on the on that Nintendo in front of you, on the right-hand side, you'll see it just pass through 1,200. Yep. That's your altimeter. Exactly. Yeah. So well, it's just zone. keep it going to 2,000. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it works. It. So that what it actually is is the uh, Garmin G1000, yeah, exactly. uh, which is a lovely piece of kit. I think that's what was in the one we flew, wasn't it? I think it? it was. Yeah. Yeah. As again, it looks all familiar. Yeah, cool. So. Yeah. No worries. Whereas I was sat on the right so, hand side last time. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So we've got 400 feet to to go as we're getting up there. Um, what kind of platform do you think's underneath this? Broadly speaking, what do we have in our technology stack that drives games? Um, so I guess there's probably two main contenders, I'd say. Probably either something like Service Fabric or something like Kubernetes, potentially. Um, the yeah. reason I'd say something like Service Fabric is if they needed to replicate any state. I know there's things like Halo, for example, that have leveraged Service Fabric and um, IoT and things yeah. like that, but maybe Kubernetes? Yeah, all right. No worries. And just to give you an example of task saturation, you busted through 2,000 oh, feet yeah. as you're talking. <laughs> so it gets you to level out. And we might go an external view, mate. Yeah. yeah. So in terms of the platform, um, there's some there's some stuff you get in Azure uh, and there's some stuff you don't unless you're a game developer. So um, I was, uh, I, I probably agree with you, what's under the hoods. Um, but at a high level, we're probably talking about the um, Xbox mm. platform itself, so Xbox Live. Um, now, this is a cloud-connected game. There's obviously a lot of open endpoint, or there's a lot of endpoints. Um, do you reckon they're exposed directly to the internet, or do you think there may or may not be things in front of them? I guess that's a challenge, right? Because with games, you want latency to be really low. Um, you don't want to drop packets, and I want to keep that latency as low as I can and reliable. So. From a typical application, I would say you'd want to protect those endpoints because you don't want to push things out and, you know, obviously uh, have things going wrong. But 
with the game, my gut instinct would say yep. probably no, but I feel like it's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trap. Ah, uh, very good. So what I'll get you to do, um, you still got full, you've got your afterburners on, right? Uh, so I'll just get you to pull your throttle back to about 60%. Yeah. Uh, it'll help you maintain your, your altitude because you, you just passed three now, which is fine because I knew you'd do that. Uh, yep. Yep. <clears throat> And we should start to see your altitude kind of level out. Still going up a little bit. Yeah. Um, just go. On go. your, I want to say your left hand thumb, you should have a little hat switch. And if you push that forward, that should give you a little bit of downward trim. Oh, you're you looking for the down trim, I think it's that one. Yep, just to there help you. Go. So you'll need that trim throughout your flight to keep you steady. Cool. So what's off to our left, mate? That would be Brisbane, if I remember rightly. Yep. So we're going to get you to orbit over Brisbane and we're going to have a chat about a few other things around cool. here. Yeah, so um, it's interesting, like, when we're talking about security um, and, and flight sim and Xbox and anything in Xbox in general, um, you can bet your bottom dollar, especially on uh, day one launches or anything that has, you know, the likelihood of mass impact or uh, you know, there's something going south that's not working, that there is probably security in front of it. Um, so for us, when we talk to customers, uh, a lot of our conversations, at least in our region at the moment, are around um, DDoS protection mm. layer. Uh, now, Xbox, as is all of our products, are behind uh, what is publicly known as DDoS protection basic at the moment. Gotcha. Um, so there is at least some layer of protection there. Now, what is it protecting against? It's probably not... Um, there probably is up to layer seven defenses, to be honest, because of what this is and the the impact if it goes offline. But you can imagine um, something at this scale is going to, you know, at least uh, focus on the layer three, mm. layer four attacks. Um, so no one can DDoS yeah, it. Yeah, gotcha. All right, mate. So what I'll get you to do is hook a left, and we're actually going to start orbiting the city. And let's see if you can remember where the Microsoft office is. We're going to see if we can find it. Well, I was just having a little look, and I'm convinced it's probably around here. Yep, that's that's exactly the building, mate. Well done. <laughs> so let's go back there. We're going to hook it back. Uh, if you were uh, in the real world at the moment, you would have busted uh, classy airspace. So um, you'd have air traffic controllers screaming at you. Um, if it was a really bad day for you, there's uh, Ambly Air Force Base. It's not too far that way. They may send the fighters up Sweet. against you if you don't respond yeah that's right so what we'll do is we'll get you to descend to a thousand okay. feet which will be below some of the building height mostly in line with the top of the buildings and i'm going to get you to do the left hand orbits around the cbd while we're talking and trying to task saturate you a little bit more <laughs> great i'll cut the power back cool so hook a little bit of a right and i want you to aim for that um yeah that's it that's it so see just under your left wing that bridge and that tall yep. building? I want you to kind of get down and then start orbiting that major cluster of the CBD. Now, interesting enough, we spoke before. It's obviously, uh, it's 6.30 at night yeah. now. Um, the actual weather in Brisbane today has been really interesting. Um, very, not stormy, but it's kind of like the precursor to cyclonic activity. Mm. That's it, mate. Hook a left, start following the river. Hard left, hard left. That's it. Um, so what you're seeing in front of you at the moment, I don't think is representative <laughs> of our weather system. Yeah. So I'm not sure whether you cheated and turned it off, to be honest, and it might just be because you've changed time of day. It's gone yeah, out of real-time mode into, like, the non-interactive weather mode. There we go. There we go. Um, oh. Let me have a quick look out the window because I'm positive, like, it's it's cloudy and stormy at the moment. Uh, but the interesting thing about uh, this may actually demonstrate a point oh. that there's yeah. real-time weather <laughs> and then there's not real-time weather within flights here. Yeah. Uh, and the real-time weather is uh, essentially not too dissimilar to the model that would be used for predictions. Uh, in places. So it's, you know, large, it's planet scale. Uh, and it's also, in terms of the volume, it's essentially computed against a column of air. 
and within that column of air, you've got obviously the gases, but you've also got the moisture. Uh, and it's got these columns that cover the whole earth. Um, and going back through some of the stats that they, they released on it, there's, uh, I think they said it's either a quarter of a million or 2.5 million boxes to cover the earth. And each of those boxes is a volume. Um, and each of those boxes has 60 layers. Wow. Yeah, so the, the, the model itself requires a fair amount of uh, computation to process, uh, more so than you could handle on your computer. Um, and you can consider it like a small scale uh, weather simulation mm. that say a Bureau of Meteorology would do. And that's do. just for the weather so, itself, uh, that's... And purely just for the atmospherics. Jeez. Yeah. Big system. Um, so, yeah, and just in real life, like winds uh, go up in layers and what you get at the surface level is always different than what you get at say 5,000, 10,000, you know, even at 1,000 feet increments. Um, but that weather comes from somewhere. We're not predicting it. So we're streaming yeah. that in from providers. Um, and it's actually a third party provider that they've openly named. It's called uh, Mito Blue. So what kind of technologies, uh, Chris, we'll see how your task saturation goes. What kind of technologies do you think we'd use to stream uh, new weather coming yeah. in? Um, so that would I expect be something like an event hub. You'd have that receiving all of the data. Yep. Um, and if you needed to do any aggregation, then you might have something like stream analytics on the way in. Um, now, I think that's uh, probably pretty accurate. And I think there's probably some batch processing behind all of this yep. as well, because it's got large scale computation. Um, now, whether it's bat pro batch processing as you and I know it as a technology, or whether it's something slightly more customized, we kind of, we don't really know, but that's, you can have a fairly well-educated guess of what's under the yeah. woods. Um, and if anyone was ever interested in replicating something like this in terms of an architectural pattern, those are the kind of things you'd be looking at using. Mate, you're doing pretty good. You haven't smacked a building yeah, yet. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, um, I'm constantly changing my camera around to make sure there's nothing coming up to trip me yeah. up. <laughs> well, it's, it's, and it's you know good that you say that. Um, how are how your palms out of interest? You're getting a bit sweaty trying uh, no, to keep right, it together. I'm all right. I'll be honest though, you're my right, focus right. is more on flying the plane than you, because, uh, you know, recording <laughs> this, I feel like, uh, you know, I don't yeah. want to be going down in flames, literally. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, you won't get an invite back next yeah, time we exactly. go flying. Um, but just out of interest, what are you flying around? And, you know, there's an, an interesting thing in front of you, like, what are you seeing all around you at the moment? Uh, so this is the city business district, if that's what you mean, or? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we're seeing a whole bunch of, uh, of, of structures. Um, yeah. Now, unfortunately, Brisbane is not of a sufficient scale at the moment for them to have provided a whole bunch of hand models yes. uh, buildings. So all of, all of Brisbane, I'm pretty sure, is autogen. Um, there is the Gabba, uh, which is that sporting uh, complex, which will point out as you do another yep. loop. Um, but what you're seeing in front of you is procedurally generated. Uh, which is pretty cool. Um, there's a whole, we know there's a whole bunch of technologies under the hood that went into to, to building this. Um, if you were going to procedurally generate or teach a computer to actually recreate this from certain things, like what, what, are you, what do you think the inputs are? What kind of technologies do you think it came from? Yeah, so um, I kind of know a little bit around the background of this one. So I think they used loads of the Bing Maps data, if I remember rightly. And um, I think it's every three days or every two days they refresh that data set. Um, but it's quite funny for anyone who hasn't played yet. Um, funnily enough, it wasn't one of the areas that I flew over before they patched it, but they recently did a patch for the States. And um, yeah. one of the ones that I think was wrong was the uh, was the White House. So the White House looked like a complete block rather than... Uh, what it looks like yeah. right now is quite funny. There we go. That's the one you're on about, isn't it? Just in front of us. So yeah, clear. That's it. We'll so that's, it. that's the Gabba, um, which hopefully uh, for those of you cricket fans, uh, if you're a cricket fan, so that's probably your Indian and your, your British and your New Zealand audiences and maybe the South Africans, Chris. Uh, that's where we like to beat all your teams at cricket. <laughs> um, that's not always it happen. looks more like, uh, uh, but it, like the you Apple can building, doesn't it? <laughs> Inside of flight. It does, zone. and it's really interesting. So it's 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 grabbing the, the image itself, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, and then 
there's a certain amount of training that's been applied to procedurally generate not just that but all the other buildings uh, and then building it off that being imagery um, now for us there's a whole bunch of technologies in that pipeline so obviously we're talking Bing maps for the work you and I mm. do uh, we probably know oh. it as a slightly different interface into that system which is the, um, the Azure there, maps okay. oh yeah don't stay away from that mate uh oh it's coming for me. Oh, geez, you're going head to head, mate. <laughs> I wonder if that's a yeah, live, going for I wonder too. if that's Look a live that. guy coming to troll us. It is because uh, <laughs> planes don't, AI planes don't bank like that, mate. So he's, he's coming for a look, <laughs> which is good because it's a talking point we might jump exactly. to soon. Yeah, so that we've got the, what we know is as Azure Maps. And then on top of that, there's a whole bunch of uh, uh, enrichment on that data. Hmm which is being taken advantage to do the procedural generation of buildings, which for us, we're talking about technologies like um, ML Studio yep. or Azure ML to come up with this. You know, the impressive thing is the scale it's done at, right? This is, you know, planet scale processing and auto gen of buildings. Um, and it does it not nice. just for <laughs> the current situation, it's doing it for like multiple you know, uh, lighting setups depending on time of day, but also the seasons. Yep. So I got um, distracted there. Yep. He was doing a flyby next to me. I don't know if you saw. <laughs> and wouldn't it be funny if that was me just buzzing you as well? <laughs> ah, so it's you trolling me. This is how good you're. Uh... <laughs> it, it's not, unless I'm flying with like. Look, no hands. <laughs> something else. Um, cool. Well, so we're gonna we're gonna peel off here. Cool. Uh, we're gonna go to the right a little to bit. To the right, yeah. Um, we've got some features in front of you. So, what are you following at the moment, just out of interest? What's this defining landmark in front of you? Uh, pass. Yeah. So we've got the river. Oh right, sorry. Uh, we've got I thought, the roads. I, thought I was looking for a building yep. or something. Yep. 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 Yeah. So there's actually an interesting building here that hasn't been generated properly. If you have a look to your right, to the this low. One. Uh, that's um, Lang Park, also known as Suncork Stadium, which is our big uh, rugby facility, uh, among other things. Uh, and then in front of us, the other defining features are you're heading towards uh, some mountains. So that's um, Mount Cutha. I'm not sure if you've got and up there. Is Lone Park around there somewhere? Uh, it's a little bit further to the west, but yeah, this is considered western gotcha. suburbs. Um, now, interesting enough, the, the terrain... Uh, they published a frightening figure for the data mm. set. Um, there was a little bit of apprehension from people to start with about that flight sim was going to be internet connected. Yeah. Now, but the reason for that is the sheer scale of data to deliver the experience that people expect these days, right? So when they talk about the terrain data, they're talking about two petabytes of geometry and textures. Wow. Yeah, which uh, you cannot fit on a you know, a set of Yeah, rays. I was going to say, I've got, like, I've you got could, a decent like, rig, like, but I can't handle two petabytes. Yeah, that's some box <laughs> set, right? Um, so it, when we have a look at what it's physically doing, it's the reason you have an internet-connected experience these days is you're streaming that data live, uh, which goes back to why, if you have a look at the internet connectivity requirements for Flight Sim, it has a range from like 2 meg to 50 meg, I think it mm -hmm. is. Um, and the different bandwidth you get gives you a different level of fidelity because you can physically stream more to yeah. you. Um, now that goes back to the you know, the big maps and the, the Azure maps and you can take a good guess that um, there's no way to deliver two petabytes to you know multiple simultaneous players without using technologies that do um, edge acceleration like CDN yep. or things like Azure Front Door, right? So, gotcha. Cool, mate. All right. I'll get you to do a, a 180, and we'll go back. Okay, doke. Yeah, and if we go back to um, doing pretty well, mate. the point you were making earlier about security, I guess for some reason my mind was thinking API management and things like that as well, and that kind of protection. But uh, yeah, you know, DDoS protection, no-brainer. And I guess there's a few other things as well that um, might be interesting. Um, you know, given we're talking about gaming. Um, Things like Playfab, for example, I don't know if you've looked into or heard about Playfab that much at all, but it's something that we acquired a couple of years back and is a bit like the um, the back-end kind of services of uh, of gaming as a service. Um, and it might be that type of thing that uh, 
maybe not for this particular game at least but if you're a game developer and you're interested in uh, offloading some of that responsibility you might use something like Clayfab as well yeah absolutely so we're heading back to where I'm going to take you so, so you can see the, the Brisbane CBD to yep. your right yep and can you see just on the distance at the horizon there's some little flashing lights on the yeah. ground uh, oh, to the right that's them yep that's Brisbane International oh, so we're going to take you into the big <laughs> airport um, and if you have a look down the Brisbane CBD old mate's still doing circuits down there you can see his strobes going off yeah yep which is an interesting conversation point as well so um you already said it before what kind of uh what kind of platform underneath do you think is potentially powering the ability to do multiplayer mm. so yeah i'd say um you might find something like service fabric or azure kubernetes service yeah. kubernetes of course um could be the contenders and i guess it depends what needs to be replicated in terms of states because that's going to be the yep. main point isn't it is how the state is shared between all the players that's exactly right and um service fabric is something that gets kind of periodic love uh, but it's also something that's probably very misunderstood and how to use it properly but one of the properties that service fabric has one of the features it offers is that concept of an active framework so we know under xbox live and games like halo it does utilize service fabric and the active framework to propagate mm -hmm. that state which is kind of what you're seeing here you've got another player um whoever it is it's not me i promise <laughs> there he is. is currently doing uh low flights and low passes uh on the brisbane cbd and well, i guess i think that was a king air uh, it looks like he's doing some aerobatics as well um and for you that's part of that connected state so as as you're modifying your control services and moving around in 3d space uh your information is getting propagated to that individual um and then further to that, and unfortunately due to the, the global pandemic, uh, there's not much air traffic at the moment. Uh, but typically this time of day in Brisbane on a work day, all the airliners would be, would be piling in from the Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne route, which is one of the world's busiest uh, air routes. Gotcha. Um, so we should be seeing a whole bunch of airliner traffic. And then on top of that, where we're taking you is also one of the bases for the Royal Flying Doctors in Australia. So there should be a whole bunch of um, not general aviation, but kind of this this other tier of, of aviation coming in and out. And all of that is also managed with uh, old mates coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get you, Chris. He doesn't want you to do I your know. podcast. Um, <laughs> I never thought yeah, I'd ever get uh, heckled well. in one of my podcasts, but uh, there we go. Oh, look at him showing off. There we go. Look at that. Doing an upside down flight there. It's going to pass by upside down. Very interesting. Uh, now, to go back to that global traffic yeah. as you keep an eye on that maniac. Um, so we know who the global traffic provider is, right? So it's a, a site that a lot of people are probably familiar with called FlightAware. Mm -hmm. And what FlightAware do is they're an aggregator of um, ADSB traffic globally now what that is is all, all aircraft um, are either passively or actively contributing to radar plots um, and we know uh, flight aware talk about having um, 180 million radar plots per hour so that's the global air traffic that they're capturing um, it's probably not overly a lot at the mm. moment um, but that's um, that's what they do and then we take a feed from flight aware of 180 million plots per hour um yeah that equates to about 150 gig a day which is pretty significant right and that's coming into our system how much comes from our system to you will obviously you know be dependent on um that volume that you currently get streamed to you which isn't like that we don't stream the whole world we only stream a portion of it at a time in area proximity there we go uh we're in what that enables us to do is have uh, have flight sim populated with both maniacs flying inverted King Airs um, <laughs> and real airliners doing the right thing. Gotcha. 
Yeah, you're looking for he's probably created himself. Yeah, he's uh, left us now. Or herself. Sorry. Yeah, they've they've got Themselves. they've got bored of us. <laughs> We're not doing anything yep. interesting. <laughs> no worries. Well, now we are going to do something interesting, oh, man. No. So, uh, I think we've come to uh, the end of the the architecting in the cloud experience, and we're going to have uh, an enjoyable experience watching you. <laughs> now, there's some interesting stuff to be seen here when we're talking about the streamed, um, uh, the stream maps information. Mm. Uh, there is actually a new runway in Brisbane, which you're currently flying over. So you see that big white sandy area underneath you? Yeah. That is now a fully functional runway. Mm. Um, and this is an interesting example of where the maps are slightly out of date of other components that are probably being streamed to you. Yeah. Um, and I'm just looking at the VFR map you have, and the VFR map actually shows the old airport, not the oh, new one. Okay. Yeah. So, mate, so we're going to get you to uh, land to the north, runway 19, uh, which is basically the direction you're going. So, okay. can you identify the runway down to your right? Uh, yeah, that's it. it. So, the taxi yep. taxiway is blue. Uh, that runway is uh, largely unlit at the moment, but it's a big, big black one. So, I'm going to get you to pull your power back, probably to about 30%. And you're going to descend to a thousand feet and you're going to take up the reciprocal heading of that runway okay so i'll let you do the maths of 109 of 190 plus 180 370. <laughs> that was a struggle <laughs> that was a struggle i know and like you did it live if anyone saw any hard cut in the podcast you know he cheated <laughs> there is definitely no hard cut here <laughs> with, oh, with right. your audio and video the flight soon stuff there is definitely going to be no <laughs> special editing of this one excellent so oh, please balancing. roll back mate I want you to pull that back yep. to about uh, 1300 RPM yep a little bit more a little bit more it's a, it's a lot further than you think keep going back keep pulling the throttle back keep going keep going keep coming Keep coming. So Keep I'm already coming. down towards zero on the. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Limited that. There we go. Hook a hook a 180, uh, and let's get you set up for the downwind. Uh, turn right. So turn, turn right, right heading. Yep. And you can begin your descent to 1,000 feet. Okay. So just level out a little bit. Down our overbank. It would be a shame if we got so and just nose up just a little bit. So it just yeah, yeah, you're currently going into a crater dive. There we go. Nose down, nose down, nose down. I want you to go for 90 knots. Hook a left. So you don't want to go straight over the runway. Yeah. You're gonna be think about being like um, a kilometer off to the left. Oh. Yep. It's all right, keep coming down. And the runway lights have come on for you. This is where I tell everyone I still haven't successfully landed in flight sim. That's right, mate. <laughs> we'll, we'll do our best to make sure your landings equal your takeoffs today. All right, so you, you're converging on the runway a little bit, so just come left a little bit. Come left? Come left, yep, head left. There we go. Left again. So... Otherwise, you're going to have to do a really sharp turn at the end. And then what's going to happen is you're going to go, I'm looking good, I'm looking good, and then you're going to stall it. And, oh, uh, I gotcha. Virtually, yep. Come left again. So see if you can get over that the line of white lights on your left. Oh, I want yep. to go that far, okay. Yep. We'll get you set up, mate. And you're coming down to 1,000 feet, so you're, like in your, you're holding altitude well. Your speed's looking 80 knots, yep. So I want you to give me a stage oh, there of flight. Is. Oh, there's your mate back again. <laughs> I'm just wondering, like, can you see the name of the user? Does it say, like, Tim nah. Layden or Dan Larson? <laughs> uh, did you brief some of them to say uh, you should fly around here at this time? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> well, some, we maybe some of the instructors at the school told them. A bit. All right, so did you drop some flaps out for me? Yep. No, you didn't. There oh, no, we go. I can do. There we go. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, flaps one. All right, and I'll get you to look to your right. So 90 degrees. 
Now, when you get to the end of that runway, which is uh, those white bars, we call that the threshold, um, we'll that get one. you to go another stage of flat. Okay. Um, and I'll just give you give me a little bit more power, mate. Just give me a little bit more power. Thanks, mate. Yeah. So we want you about 65, 70 knots. Cool. Yep. And these, for those looking at, uh, watching at home, these are not the correct speeds for landing a Cessna, but I'm doing the best I can, Chris. <laughs> he's got to work what he's got. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, so your normal approach speed should be between 60 and 70 knots on final, mate. So okay. you've just got to keep the speed up for the time being. All right. So... Once like you get it. over that road, I want you to start a, a right-hand turn. Okay. Yep. There you go. So start now. And we, ideally, we want you to roll out. So not too much, not too much. Oh. Don't pull up. Okay. Nose down. Nose down a little bit. Nose down. That's it. a nice long runway so don't freak out about trying to get lined up before the start of the flights all right we've got plenty of time all right so your altitude's coming down so you're about halfway around you're almost halfway down keep coming nose down nose down and then pull some power back give me about whatever a half yeah that's it keep coming around keep coming around so that's that big white thing in front of you oh that's what we're going for okay good to know yeah. oh Oh, yeah, don't do a Harrison Ford and land on the taxiway. 500. All right, oh. 500 feet. Okay, pull the power all the way back, mate. Choppy throttle. And I want you to give me a full flap now. And you're going to balloon, so you're going to have to push your nose down just a tad as that happens. Yep. That's it. All right, nose up. So probably switch into the cockpit view now if you can. That's it. So line up left, go left a little bit. That's it, looking good. So 60 knots, mate. So keep that nose where it is. Just keep driving it down. That's it. Pull up a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. There we go. Look at that, mate. Like I bought one. And it's all intact. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you want from uh, we'll come I think if you go back and have a look at the replay I think you hit the nose wheel first but whatever you're down <laughs> it's not recorded or anything is it oh wait no, oh, oh. <laughs> and stay oh, no, between those the, blue uh, lights you're, you're going oh, like well. rally driving at the moment yeah we're, we're, we're done in the air now I've done my bit <laughs> excellent mate well, congratulations. So, interesting thing. So, we, uh, how long was that? About half hour. And I told you before I started recording, this would be the longest nine to 15 minutes of your life. Uh, <laughs> and we're going to be doing some orbits, and I'd be going for basically task saturation with you as well. So, you get to experience what it's like. There we go. We're going to just leave it here for now <laughs> so I can yep. carry on talking. Yeah, he's just parking. <laughs> we're parked. Very good. Yeah. So let's see how your brain goes. Can you remember all the technologies we spoke about? Oh, man. So we talked about service fabric or potentially Kubernetes. We talked about event hubs and uh, stream analytics. We talked about things like DDoS protection. Uh, we talked, well, I brought in PlayFab as well. Uh, we talked about Bing Maps or Azure Maps. Yeah. Um, and I guess there's multiple elements for the... You know the game sync and game streaming as well as the um kind of delivery of the content then as well so the cdn the storage etc i think that's yep. probably 80 or 90 percent <laughs> yeah i think that's about right uh and i think as we spoke about we talked about the properties for using them as well so you know cdn and front door when we're talking about doing edge acceleration and content delivery um we didn't go into the finer points of the differences between them um but you know we can save that for a part two <laughs> Look at you inviting yourself back again. <laughs> uh, as well. Hey, you came back for seconds. <laughs> exactly. Well, no, we'll have to go for uh, another flight somewhere else. That's sure. right. On dear dear audience, if you would like to see part two <laughs> of this, 
<laughs> you just let Chris know. So this is where, and we'll I, uh, do some more cloud architecture on the fly. <laughs> so this is where I just go ahead and switch back to uh, the pair of us here and take the uh, flight sim off the screen now, and uh, <laughs> don't get you any temptation to start us off again. <laughs> I'm not part. I'm not going from uh, from you know nothing to uh, <laughs> to flying again. That's a, that's another lesson. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Awesome. So um. Yeah, I guess uh, this has been a different session. I've not done a lot of talking at all. I've really been fixated on the screen and not crashing in front of everyone, which was a success. Did a good job, mate. <laughs> Shall we call this the uh, Cloud with Chris Christmas special? <laughs> That's a bit of a mouthful, but we can do, we can do. Um, yeah, I think this one's been good fun. Uh, lots of cloud technologies and uh, quite literally surfing the cloud as we do it as well. And... Yep. Um, yeah, I guess let us know if it's been interesting and useful and we can obviously do some more unique, different type uh, sessions like this again in the future and uh, have a bit of fun with it. Yeah, it was it was a bit different, very yeah. uh, very different approach, not what we do for our day jobs. Yeah. Um, but the principles are still the same, right? Like we were, as we were flying around, we were having a chat around what kind of things we needed to achieve uh, and then we were essentially composing the solution uh, with the technologies we have available to us, which is what you and I do in our day jobs, right? Exactly. Um, just the domain uh, has changed uh, and I get to wear a costume for this. <laughs> and I think that's the, not the costume bit, but as much as I love the costume, I think that's the important bit though is the domain piece, right? Because if you remember yeah. halfway through, you asked about like the security um kind of requirements and i almost had this debate with myself yeah. because for games you want to make sure you've got low latency and you're not gonna you know drop potentially things and interrupt that gaming experience because you know i as a gamer i'm streaming right now yeah. um the worst thing for me is that i get cut out of the game and then i've got to stop the game because i've lost my my flow at that point that's just a yeah you know a non-starter and i think that's where you start getting some interesting nuances compared to what we normally see right because normally it's things like yeah we've got this enterprise application security super important we need this that the other whereas the yep. boundary for something like this would be very different and um, yeah yeah it's interesting I, I think there's still a lot of principles that cross over between for the sure. two like when we're talking sure. about that latency thing um it's a good example of what a what a requirement is and isn't um like saying I want low latency is not actually a requirement. We would be approaching this problem from um, our solution needs to maintain a latency uh, for this particular component of less than five milliseconds. Right. Exactly. Uh, I know it's more than that. The net code handles, you know, greater range than that. Uh, but that would be a specific requirement that we would architect for when we're doing this cloud architecture stuff, right? Yep. Indeed. And then that goes a long way to uh, narrowing down the choices of what we can and can't use based on those requirements. And you and I quite regularly talk to customers where we've got multiple conflicting requirements, yes. which is a totally legitimate thing to have. And then the skill is going, well, you can have this or you can have this, but you can't have both. So we need to work out what the priority and the trade-off is and then go for the right technology. Exactly. Exactly. Good. Good. So, um, yeah, I guess, you know, we've uh, <laughs> we've got that one ticked off. I can breathe a sigh of relief now that uh, I haven't crashed a plane, which is uh, reassuring. Uh, I'll have to go for a bit That's more it. flying afterwards. Um, but I'm Excellent. sure we'll have to do something similar again, whether it's flight sim or something different. Um, I've toyed with the idea, and I'll say this on air, but I've toyed with the idea of doing something like uh, an um, Among Us stream with a few people uh, and just talking about <laughs> architecture or things <laughs> going on. Uh, and I think that could be quite fun, just a kind of a hanging out scenario and maybe even talking how something like that could be made, for example. So maybe that's a series, just exploring different games, sims, whatever, and just uh, thinking about how they could be made. That could be fun. I think so. I think the big takeaway for people uh, on the outside of our team and Microsoft watching that uh, would be realising probably just how human a lot of us are. Um, <laughs> we're just normal yeah. people. <laughs> and you, you get that from the conversations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially when the Aussies are involved. I mean, we're not so far behind in, in the UK. <laughs> awesome no um, that was a glorious statement mate. Uh, I'm gonna pin yeah, that up I feel somewhere. like We're I feel so like you're gonna snip that bit from the video and just 
put it as a gif or something or remind me about it it's a highlight exactly. reel <laughs> good no thank you sir um really really good session again um really enjoyed it as much as my face probably didn't show it sometimes on the stream but i had a lot of fun um and it meant I got to get out the flight yoke for the first time in a while as well. So I'm sure I'll be playing a bit more today. Um, but yeah, thank Excellent. you very much. And uh, we'll certainly get you back again there, sir. Take it easy. It's a pleasure, mate. Have a good you Christmas. Too. See ya. Good. So that was uh, that was Flight Sim and uh, Architecting in the Cloud. One pattern at a time, you know, with one of the other series, but we quite literally took that in terms of architecting in the clouds and uh, making it up on the fly as Cam had there. I couldn't have put it better myself. So many different technologies, uh, understanding how they map back to the solution really here and what we're talking about from Flight Sim 2020. So if you've enjoyed it, give us a like, uh, please subscribe, please follow, and please do pass it on to others who you think would enjoy the content as well, uh, because this just encourages Encourages us to do more similar things and you know if the Among Us idea or other games uh, are something you'd be interested in as well um, let us know give us a shout and uh, we can absolutely go ahead and, uh, and work on that so in the meantime all we have to say is uh, thank you for watching and stay tuned until the next time bye for now